Hello my friends, Thomas with Alpha Concepts here and today we're going to talk about the Illinois gun-free zones. Uh, it's going to seem like it's worse than it is. Um, most days I do not have to ever disarm. Carrying a concealed farm is a lifestyle choice. You're going to have to just plan the places that you go, the stores that you shop, and avoid gun-free zones. Avoid them for a few reasons. Number one, I don't want to disarm. Number two, I don't want to break the law. Number three, I don't want to give someone who hates me my money, and if you're trying to discriminate against my right to self-defense and you're trying to make me defenseless, then you hate me. Uh, and number four, uh, we know that statistically 90% of mass shootings occur where? Gun-free zones. So statistically, you're in more need of having your firearm in a gun-free zone, a place where the law says that you can't have it. And yes, it does carry the force of law. Yes, people have been prosecuted for carrying firearms in gun-free zones. So it's just not worth it. And going back to the idea that you're giving someone your money that hates you, uh, the whole idea of concealed means concealed means you're lazy. So let's just not go there. Let's plan uh, accordingly and let's avoid the gun-free zones if we have a chance. So let's go through all the gun-free zones. Let's talk about the exemptions because there are some exemptions uh, that we need to discuss. And having said that, nothing that you're going to see in this video should be considered legal advice. Definitely do ask your questions. Leave a, a comment if you have a question. Shoot me an email if you have a question. Contact your lawyer if you have a question. While I'll do my best to give you my layman opinion, nothing I ever say should ever be considered legal advice. So let's get started. So let's start by talking about the vehicle parking lot exemption first and foremost before we talk about any of the other gun-free zones. The vehicle parking lot exemption, in my layman opinion, basically says that so long as I, with a concealed firearm, remain within my vehicle, then I'm not breaking the law, even if that parking lot is a gun-free zone. And if I need to exit the vehicle, so long as I leave that firearm within a locked vehicle out of view, then again, I am not breaking the law. The whole idea about a car is not a holster, I get it, I understand, but the law says what it says. We'll talk about a car is not a holster in a later video. But if I don't have a vehicle, if I'm walking across the parking lot with my firearm, then I am breaking the law. The law further says that I can exit the vehicle if I need to with the firearm, but for the sole purpose of placing that in the vehicle's trunk. And when we talk about leaving the uh, firearm in a case within the vehicle, uh, Illinois law defines case as a firearm carrying box, a shipping box, or an other container. It also says that your glove box or your counsel uh, would comply with the definition of a case. So um, when we leave the firearm in the vehicle in a case, firearm carrying box, shipping box, or other container, very broad term, and again also includes glove compartment or console. All right, well, the Concealed Carry Licensing Act has 23 categories of gun-free zones, and it says that you shall not knowingly carry that firearm into one of the gun-free zones. We're going to talk about how the signage uh, must be clearly and conspicuously posted, um, and it is possible to unknowingly carry into a gun-free zone. So that word is in the law as a protection. It gives your lawyer something to argue about if you are ever arrested uh, for possessing a firearm in a gun-free zone. You can say you didn't know about it, but then you're going to have to prove why you didn't know about it. And like it or not, you are guilty till proven innocent. That's not the way it's supposed to be, but that's just the way it is. So let's take a look at what those 23 categories of gun-free zones are. We can really shorten up the list, okay? Uh, public, private, elementary schools, right? Any school from the preschool all the way up to the university level, that's going to take away a bunch of these categories. All school property, keep it simple. But again, the law says preschool uh, and elementary schools, uh, secondary schools, those are gun-free zones. So again, preschools are gun-free zones, including any room that's within a building that might be used as a preschool. So if you're in an office building and that office building has, you know, maybe let's say one floor dedicated to uh, um, uh, watching uh, employees' children, then that would be a gun-free zone. That floor would be a gun-free zone. Illinois law also says that if you are operating a child care facility out of your house, which many people do, then when kids are there at your house, you can't have a firearm. The firearm has to be locked up. But when the kids go away, the guns can come out to play. Illinois law also says any building uh, that is under the control 
of an executive or legislative branch of government. If you think about your state capital, that would be a gun-free zone that's under the control of the executive or legislative branch of government. Uh, if you're going to visit your elected official, that too might be considered a gun-free zone. And I definitely recommend, if you know anything about me, you know not only am I an instructor, but I'm an advocate, you've got to remain in constant and polite contact with your elected officials. And if you're going to visit one of your elected officials, even if they're pro-gun, the law says that their, their office uh, might be considered a gun-free zone. So basically, like I said, all schools and all government property uh, are going to be considered gun-free zones, but there are some exemptions. Nothing in that previous paragraph shall prohibit someone who has a concealed carry license from carrying a concealed firearm while they are in a park regulated by the Department of Natural Resources. That would be a state park or any other publicly designated hunting areas. So while you're hiking, camping, hunting, fishing, that sort of thing in a state park, you can carry a concealed firearm. However, don't go into any of the guest buildings or anything like that because then you would be in violation of the law because again, those guest buildings could be considered under the control of the executive branch of government. Oh, and by the way, as of January 1st, 2022, yes, yes, you can carry a concealed firearm while hunting. Uh, go read the wildlife code, it was amended. Yes, I know that didn't used to be the case. I know someone's gonna leave a comment that says, you can't carry while you're hunting. Yes, you can as of January 1st, 2022. Check out the wildlife code. All courthouses are gun-free zones. It doesn't matter you know, if it's an appeal at court, circuit court, Supreme Court, doesn't matter. All courthouses are gonna be gun-free zones. Any building that is under the control of a unit of local government. So we're talking about your village hall, your public works, your police department, your fire department. Those buildings are also going to be gun-free zones. As I said, we can really shorten this down by saying all schools and all government buildings. Jails, they're gun-free zones. Adult or juvenile detention facilities are gun-free zones. That doesn't stop people from smuggling guns into jail, but don't you be one of them. The law says you can't do it. Hospitals, hospital affiliates, nursing homes, mental health facilities, those too are gun-free zones. Not all doctor's offices are gun-free zones because it says hospital affiliates, so that's something to think about. If your doctor does not post a sign, you can carry. Just be sure to tell them to subtract two pounds when you step on the scale. Any bus or train or any form of transportation paid for in whole or in park with public funds, including the bus stations, the train stations, bus depots, their land, their property. There is some question, does that include the bus stop on the corner? You're standing under the street sign on the corner? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, that's something that you want to discuss with your lawyer. In my personal opinion, if you want to err on the side of caution, why would you be standing at a bus stop? Unless you plan to get on a bus, buses are gun-free zones. Uh, this is the one place you need your firearm absolutely, absolutely the most. Chicago Transit Authority is a bloodbath. Having said that, the Firearm Policy Coalition has a lawsuit against this. They filed a lawsuit uh, in 2022. Uh, it's going to take years to litigate. All of these lawsuits do, but something to keep in mind under current law, all public transportation is gun-free zones, including the transportation facilities. I do suspect that the FPC's lawsuit will be successful, but at a, again, it's going to take some time to, uh, to go through. So until then, uh, in my personal opinion, not legal advice, but the law says you cannot carry on gun-free zones. I... If I had to take public transportation, if I had no choice, I try not to because it's dangerous, but if I have no choice, personally speaking, you make your own decision, again, not legal advice, I don't hesitate to transport the firearm uh, when I take public transportation, and that is a whole different ball game. Carry and transportation are not the same. For uh, carry, uh, I'm sorry, for transportation purposes, the firearm unloaded and enclosed in a case. Does that mean that you can't be arrested? No, you can be arrested for anything and then you'll have to prove your innocence in the court of law. Your lawyer will have to uh, argue the finer points of carry versus transportation. Uh, so I'm again, I'm not giving you legal advice, I'm just telling you what I do. Any establishment that serves, not sells, any establishment that serves alcohol on its premises, if 50% or more of their gross receipts within the last three months come from the sale of alcohol. How do you know what their gross receipts are? 
Well, the bottom line is it's not your responsibility to know, okay? It's their responsibility to audit their own books and post. If they post a sign saying no guns, it's no guns. If they don't post a sign saying no guns, then as long as you're not drinking, you can carry. Any special event that's conducted on property, public property, that requires the issuance of a permit from a unit of local government, meaning something, for example, like a block party or a parade. I guess someone forgot to tell the kid in Highland Park that that was a gun-free zone. That might have stopped everything. Remember when I started this video by saying 90% of mass shootings happen in gun-free zones, and in Illinois, a parade is no different. So as we know, gun laws don't stop the bad guys. They only stop the good guys uh, from defending themselves. But I'm just telling you what the law has to say. But the law also goes on to say that nothing shall prohibit you from accessing your home, your fixed place of business, or your automobile, your car, uh, if you have to go through that public gathering to access your home, your fixed place of business, or your car, then that's fine to do so long as you're not participating in the festivities. Any building that has been issued a special event retailer's license from the Liquor Control Act. So this might be something like uh, maybe a fundraiser where they didn't serve liquor yesterday and now they're serving liquor today. That probably would be a gun-free zone. Uh, you really would have no way of knowing unless they posted a sign. But what the state really, really wants, and when we go through the law and we examine the law, uh, the state is basically saying alcohol and guns don't mix. Uh, so... Again, the rule of thumb is, of course, yes, if you see a sign, you can't carry. But if they didn't serve liquor yesterday, they're serving liquor today, it's probably uh, a gun-free zone. It's probably a special event. Any public playground would be considered a gun-free zone as well. Any public park or athletic arena or athletic facility that is under the control of your municipality is going to be a gun-free zone. However, you'll see here that there is an exemption that says nothing shall stop a licensee, that's someone with a concealed carry license, from carrying on the trail or bikeway so long as only a portion of that trail or bikeway includes a park. And in my interpretation, this is to say, let's say for example, Lakeshore Drive. Lakeshore Drive has a bike trail that follows the entire Lakeshore Drive, which is many, many miles long and it goes into and out of multiple parks, in and out of multiple parks. And in my interpretation of this exemption, it says as long as that trail enters and exits the park and as long as you stay on that trail, you are not in violation of the gun-free zone. Cook County Forest Preserves are gun-free zones, not Kane County, not Kendall County, not Will County, not DuPage County, not any of the other 101 counties in the state of Illinois, only Cook County. But this was ruled unconstitutional. I did a video about it in November 2021. Uh, it's called the Solomon Ruling. You can definitely look that up. We have more details in depth on our website at alphaconcepts.com. Uh, Again, not legal advice. Some would say that the, the case is not final yet, even though June 7th, Attorney General Kwame Raul, June 7th of 2022, agreed uh, to, he conceded defeat, agreed not to, de, uh, to appeal, and agreed to pay the uh, Solomon legal team their legal expenses. But the reason why some people say that it's not settled yet is because even though the state paid their half of the legal expenses, Cook County still hasn't paid their half of the legal expenses. So some would say that it's not settled yet. Nothing I say is legal advice. All I can tell you is what I do. I am carrying in the Cook County Forest Preserves. When I go to the Cook County Forest Preserves, and if you are going to go to the Cook County Forest Preserves, that's on you. Remember, you can be arrested for anything, but you're, if you're going to go armed, also go armed with knowledge. Be prepared to explain to the officer something, for example, like, Officer, I would like to bring your attention to the Solomon ruling of November 2021 that ruled the ban in Cook County Forest Preserves to be unconstitutional. I'd also like to bring your attention that Kwame Raul, the Attorney General of Illinois, uh, agreed not to appeal the decision uh, in June of 2022. Officer, before you take any action, before you pop possibly make uh, an unconstitutional arrest, I would like you to verify everything that I'm saying with your supervisor and then shut up. That's what I'm doing. You make your own decision. I'm reminding you, you can be arrested for anything. I'm not going to pay your legal expenses. This is not legal advice. I'm only telling you what I do. Any building, classroom, laboratory, artistic venue, all university-related property, community college, college, all schools are gun-free zones in the state of Illinois. 
Any gaming facility that was licensed under the Riverboat Gambling Act or the Horse Racing Act are going to be gun-free zones. So this is going to include your casinos, your dog tracks, your horse tracks, your off-track betting facilities. Uh, as a fun fact, the Video Poker Licensing Act passed in 2014, the year after concealed carry. Therefore, it's not listed up there. In my not-lawyer opinion, as long as there's no sign on the door, if you like to do the video poker thing, uh, personally, I think you're throwing your money away, but it's your money to throw away. Do with as you feel uh, fit. Uh, having said that, in my layman opinion, if there's no sign on the door of the video poker facility, then you can carry. Any stadium or arena for a collegiate or professional sporting event would be a gun-free zone. Public libraries are gun-free zones. I guess they don't want you to... Uh, uh, to disturb anybody with your target practice at the library. And unfortunately, sound suppressors are illegal in Illinois, so there goes that idea. Uh, and then airports, too, are gun-free zones. However, you can fly with a firearm. And we'll do another video talking about the process of doing that step-by-step-by-step. -by -step -by -step. So be sure to subscribe to this video. But uh, airports themselves are gun-free zones. And I do know personally, I do know three people that got arrested at O'Hare Airport. Uh, and in fact, if you Google it, it happens all the time. Uh, so definitely, uh, if you're going to the airport, you really, really have to be aware of your firearm. I know it's easy to forget. I know you might leave it in your luggage. That happens frequently, but uh, do a better job. Airports are gun-free zones. Amusement parks are gun-free zones. So are zoos and museums. So I guess they don't want you going to Brookfield Zoo, uh, going hunting or something like that. Um, it is what it is. This is what the law says. Amusement, amusement parks, zoos, and museums are gun-free zones. Nuclear facilities are gun-free zones. I felt Illinois... Uh, had to win somebody's vote when they were passing the law and that person wanted them, that legislator wanted them to add this paragraph in. Nuclear facilities are federal gun-free zones and the Illinois Concealed Carry Licensing Act says that all federal gun-free zones are also state gun-free zones. So it's a little bit redundant, but nuclear facilities are gun-free zones and the vehicle parking lot exemption does not apply to nuclear facilities. In fact, the law says that even if you're on the street, driveway, parking area, property, building, or facility. Not many of us visit uh, nuclear facilities. They used to do tours pre-COVID. I've had numerous, numerous students who actually were in uh, like contractors, for example, that needed to do some repairs uh, at various different facilities. Um, people like that. If you're going to a nuclear facility, if you work, if you're an employee at a nuclear facility, definitely uh, leave your firearm at home if you want to comply with the law. The vehicle parking lot exemption does not apply. And then Illinois law says all federal uh, places are gun-free zones as well. So that's you know federal courthouses, federal buildings, Army Corps of Engineer property, which are like dams, dikes, and levees, things of that nature, uh, military bases, national cemeteries, post offices, including the post office parking lots. We've had case law on that. People outside of Illinois have gotten arrested in the parking lot of post offices. So post office parking lots are definitely gun-free zones. I recently had a employee of the United States Postal Service uh, send an email asking about, about this. And yes, definitely parking lots of federal facilities are gun-free zones. Not just the building, the vehicle parking lot exemption does not apply to federal facilities. Public or private colleges can develop resolutions. Uh, about the maintenance and the storage of firearms for purposes of a curriculum or something like that. Uh, in addition, designated gun owner parking spots. So in my mind, I envision the handicap, the expectant mother, and the gun owner spot. And I don't know about you, and I'm not advising anyone to break the law, but I'd never park in a spot that says, I have a gun, because when you come out, your windows are going to be broken. Either some anti-gun nut job or some criminal that's trying to get your gun. Uh, I have not seen a sign saying, if you have a gun, park in this spot. Uh, and indeed, I've contacted a few uh, community colleges that, uh, to see if they had any policies about that, and the ones that I contacted didn't. And of course, I didn't contact all the colleges or universities, I just contacted a few. One that I did contact, they had designated parking lots. 
So they had multiple parking lots and they said, if you have a firearm, you can park in this lot. Okay. So that's just something that you need to be aware of, um, that there might be designated parking areas that the vehicle parking lot exemption might not apply at a college to all parking lots. So if you are visiting a college, you're probably going to want to hop on the internet and uh, check up what their policies are. The owner of private property of any type can, at their discretion, the owner can, at their discretion, post a sign that says that the carrying of firearms is prohibited on that property. If you go to the state website, uh, people have asked, I'm the tenant in the building, can I post the sign? And the Illinois State Police say, no, you cannot. You are not the owner. Only the owner can post the sign. However, private residences can prohibit the carrying of firearms on their property without posting the sign. Now the law doesn't spell out how you and I go about determining, am I allowed when I visit someone's house to post the sign? The law doesn't say I have to ask permission. The law doesn't say I have to disclose. So you have to figure out and you have to decide, uh, is it okay uh, for me to carry on this property? That's up to you to figure out. This is the sign. This is the Illinois Gun Free Zone sign. It must be exactly four inches by six inches in size. It must have a black border, must have a white background. It must be a Beretta pointing to the right, not to the left. It can't be a Glock. It can't be a revolver in the bottom corner. It must say pursuant to 430 ILCS 6665. If it is not all of these things, then in my layman opinion, it is not the state compliance sign because the law says, as we'll see in one second, that it must be the uniform design uh, as the designed by the state. So that doesn't mean you can't be arrested because remember you can be arrested for anything and then you'll have to prove your innocence in a court of law which is going to cost you thousands of dollars. So in my opinion even if it's not this sign, even if it's bigger, even if it's smaller, I'm still going to honor the intent of the sign and I am going to spend my money elsewhere because it's not worth it to risk my freedom, to risk my money, to give my money to somebody who hates me, to a, a business that's discriminating against me. Honor the intent and spend your money elsewhere. The law says that the signs shall be clearly and conspicuously posted at the entrance of the building or the premises. Again, a uniform design and shall be four inches by six inches in size. My opinion, as I said again, one more time, honor the intent of any sign, spend your money elsewhere, you are guilty till proven innocent, it's not worth it. And for those people who say concealed means concealed, I think that's just an excuse to be lazy. Just like we have a vehicle parking lot exemption, we have a public right of way exemption. And the public right of way exemption says that so long as you stay on a street or sidewalk that touches or crosses most gun free zones, that you would not be in violation of the law. You would not be in violation of carrying a concealed firearm. It is a class B misdemeanor for your first offense of carrying in a gun free zone. Yes, again. Illinois law does, it has the force of law. You will be punished, you will be penalized. You're gonna to have to pay your lawyer, you're gonna to have to pay court fees, you probably pay maybe thousands of dollars in penalties. Uh, in addition to that, the Illinois State Police are gonna turn the knife in your back and grab, put their hand out and grab another 150 bucks from you. So it's not really worth it in my opinion to, uh, to go into gun-free zones. We know that we're risking our freedom, we're risking our money. We know that statistically 90% of shootings occur in gun-free zones, so you're more likely to need the firearm in a gun-free zone. Don't disarm. I'm not advising you to break the law. Shop elsewhere. Why would you disarm? Why would you get your concealed carry license in the first place? Shop elsewhere. Well, there you have it. Those are the gun-free zones in Illinois. I know it sucks, but don't shoot the messenger. As we read it line by line by line, it seems worse than it really is. Again, most days I never have to disarm. I don't break the law, not knowingly. I just choose to plan my life around supporting businesses who don't uh, infringe against my right, who don't discriminate against me, who don't want me defenseless. And that would be my recommendation that you do the same. If you haven't already taken a concealed carry class or if you're ready for renewal, I want you to come on out, train with us, train with Alpha Concepts. I would love to meet with you. Uh, as always, everybody, be armed, be trained, and be Alpha.